Good morning or good afternoon, good evening as the case might be. I know we have several people joining us from around the world today. Hello world. My name is Jeff Wood and I'm one of the engineers here at Faircom. Today's webinar will focus on data corruption and implementing high availability disaster recovery strategies. While we wait for other participants to join us, we have three quick poll questions for you. These will help us kind of understand who you are and how you're actually utilizing your COBOL. So with that said, let's go ahead and launch the first poll. As you can see right there in front of you, you've got, uh, what is your job title? You know, pick one. Hopefully you're the manager, CIO, CIO, not. Then maybe the end user, system admin. Everybody's important in an organization, right? Okay, so just take a second to fill that out for me. And while we wait for the votes to come in, I'd like to share a fun fact with you. Did you know that prior to COBOL's birth in 1959, computer manufacturers developed their own languages to run their own computers? Man, what a monopoly, huh? I'm glad that's over, right? Goodness. Okay, with that, we're gonna go ahead and close that poll out and move on to the next poll. And the next poll deals with, how much time did it take you to recover from your last COBOL outage? Hopefully not very long, hopefully you didn't have any, right? It could be one to two hours, three to five hours, greater than five hours, I don't know. So another fun fact while we would compile the votes, 80% of in-person and 95% of ATM transactions use COBOL-based technology. That's pretty phenomenal why we want to eliminate data corruption, right? Obviously, banks are using COBOL. We don't want data corruption in, in banks, not at all. All right, let's close that poll out and go to our last polling question. Last polling question actually deals with, how do you develop your COBOL reports today? Are you actually in COBOL doing it? You're using external reporting tools? Are you using an external database? Or you don't even use reports because you can't really access your COBOL data? Well, that's an issue and hopefully we can help you out with that. All right, let's go ahead and share the last fun fact for today. And you'll understand why high availability and disaster recovery is important because COBOL is in 92 of the top 100 banks data management infrastructures. So obviously you wanna make sure you have high availability and data, you know, uh, a quick way to restore your data if necessary, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and close those out. And then real quick, we're gonna go ahead and walk through each one of them and share the data with you guys to show you who's in the crowd. Let's share those results with you. Actually, we've got a good mix. I love it. We've got a lot of developers and architects in the, in the crowd. That's awesome. All right, we're gonna hide those results and go right on to the second poll. In the second poll, you can see, oh goodness, taking you guys almost more than five hours. That's unfortunate. Hopefully we've got something we're going to show you today that will we'll hopefully uh, take care of that for you. All right, let's hide those results and move into the last poll question that we had today. And this last poll question, you are using reports and that's pretty cool. We're going to show you how you can use reports with SQL if you SQLize your data. It'll be pretty awesome. All right, let's hide those results and move on. All right, thanks again for the polls. Let's move on to why we're here. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how you can eliminate data corruption in COBOL and how to implement high availability disaster recovery strategies to mitigate challenges if they do occur. In order to help us better understand how to eliminate the data corruption and implement the high availability disaster recovery strategies, I would like to introduce our Director of Business Development, Evaldo Oliveira. Hi, Jeff. And our Director of Client Services, Joe Darnell. Hey, Jeff. We'll start out with a presentation followed by a live demo and we'll close out highlighting a couple of great questions asked throughout our webinar. But before I pass things over to the guys, let's take care of a few quick details. We encourage you to ask us any questions throughout the session. Using your chat box in the GoTo, you can submit them. We will do our best to answer them as they come and Evaldo and Joe will pick up some of the most critical ones in the final Q&A session. But don't worry, we will answer all of them via email after the webinar. Keep an eye on your inbox. Also, this webinar is being recorded and will be emailed out so you can have access to it at your leisure. All right, I think that covers the basics. Let's dig in, Evaldo. Who's holding the ice axe? Oh, that's funny. It's actually a dinosaur claw, so Jeff, we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. I'm Joe, and this is Evaldo. Um, normally, we'd like you guys to see us. We're actually dressed real nice today, but obviously technical issues on the GoToWebinar site. So uh, the camera may or may not kick in at any point, but we are dressed for success today. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so really quick, uh, thanks for coming today. Here's the agenda of today's webinars. Today's one of three. We're gonna go through a brief Faircom company overview. 
talk about the C-Tree RTG product overview. A model is going to take everyone through a great live demonstration and talk about the supported platforms of C-Tree RTG, followed by a bunch of free stuff, including a sure download of our software and a free proof of concept. I think uh, you ready to hit it? Yep. Mm -hmm. So briefly about Faircom. Faircom is based in the US with offices in Europe and South America. This year is 40 years for Faircom. That's 40 years of delivering high performance database technology for mission critical applications. One of the main things why customers select us is no, no administration is really needed. So as you can see on your screen, these are just some of the companies that have used C-Tree database technology. You know, Valdo, over the years, you and I visit many customers and a couple, one of the stories that sticks out for us today is uh, two logistic companies that manage to move a billion packages a day utilizing our, our software on the back end. They chose us because of the ICM technology with acid accurate data at their fingertips at huge speeds. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it is. And, and Joe, all these customers, what they have in common is that they are all mission critical environments. Um, they all have the need for high throughput. So these are, these are ultra high fast databases running. Uh, and, and they are using C C3 as the, the database behind the, the, their application. So I would like to mention like, for example, Bank of New York, Mellon, um, they use this for the fund management application, um, hundreds of thousands of transactions per second. It's absolutely needed. And you mentioned uh, during, the, during the presentation really quick here, Joe, that they all use our ISM technology. ISM stands for Index Sequential Access Method, and this is how Faircom was born. So we developed our technology from the beginning as an ISM database designed for, for high speed and high, high availability. Uh, and it's not a coincidence that ISM is exactly the same technology that's used under COBOL. And I think that explains uh, why we have this technology called C3RTG, and we're going to talk a lot about the, the in, a, in a minute here. Great. Well, I think COBOL is in the core of thousands of mission-critical systems worldwide, and it's constantly growing. But that creates lots of business pressures. I think one of the biggest things that comes up is corrupt data and data loss. Yeah, that's a very common problem. Many, many of our customers reported that and came to us to, to looking for help. Um, what happened here, Joe, is that along the years, um, COBOL is, is now handling way more than it was designed for. So a lot of the systems, they were designed decades ago. Um, and you're going to see here in a minute that it has nothing to do with the COBOL language. The challenge is more on the data side. Um, but the truth is that when you have thousands and thousands of concurrent users, sometimes even to the hundreds, it depends on the workload. Um, concurrency is not properly well managed on the COBOL environment. Uh, and you start to see some files being corrupted. Um, most of our customers told us they don't even know which files were corrupted, so they had to just go back and rebuild everything every day, every night. Uh, and but even even rebuilding, they were risking losing data, and a lot of times they actually lost data. So yeah, that's a big challenge. Yeah, how about backend restores being corrupt as well? Well, yeah, since the data is the, the data files are corrupted, um, you try to protect yourself by doing backups, but usually the backups of those COBOL data files are done by copying files. Um, but you don't know exactly which files are corrupted or not, so you have you have re really to hope that you're copying the right ones. We have we have some customers telling us, for example, that they to make to make sure they protect themselves against corrupted data files, they copy their files every 15 minutes, just so that they have kind of a data set that they can trust on. But then when something goes bad and they go back to the restore and try to try to go, uh, restore an old backup, uh, many times those restores are not reliable and they're also corrupted. So the file gets corrupted. The backup is not trustable. The restore is corrupted. So it's a big problem. Yeah, I totally get that. One of the other things that come up is most companies have business continuity plans now where they have high availability and disaster recovery plans, but COBOL seems to be left out of most of them. That's exactly right. Uh, the, for the same reason, right? The COBOL has not been designed for such a sophisticated architecture. Building a fillover strategy and even something more complex like a disaster recovery site um, on top of your COBOL system is a big challenge. It's not easy because of the way COBOL operates. Um, but at the same time, you don't have the safety net of having a fillover because you have encrypted files, your backups are, backups are not working very well, and you have no way to fail over if something really goes south and you have to, you have to uh, stop your application. And this seems to be kind of the trifecta here. It all creates a potential disaster with systems down, which is a major panic situation. It is, yeah, it's a major loss. Um, so we have seen many, many cases where the applications are down for a few days. Uh, uh, they have to go back and roll back restores for, for like a week ago or even more than 10 days ago. Um, this is all not good. And of course, while this, hap this is happening, 
your system is down and everybody's in panic. Yeah, that's never a good thing. You know, but some companies, as they look to modernize it, it puts pressure on these managers and architects um, because there's lots of business challenges that come along with this. You know, the, I think people's go-to reaction is, let's just rewrite this application. Yeah, trying to solve the problem. Uh, I'm sure a lot, many people from the audience here probably went through this already. Someone approached them and said, hey, you just rewrite this whole thing and from move out from COBOL and do something else. Um, we don't think COBOL is the problem at all, right? The COBOL language is just another language. Rewriting the application is highly risk. It's a big challenge. Uh, usually it's very, very expensive because it's mostly addressed via services. So you, you have a bunch of people uh, rewriting code and then consulting, you know, sometimes there are some tools, uh, but in the end of the day, it's it's very, very risky because you are just rewriting everything. You're throwing away all your business logic for, for, for decades and then going back to version 0.1 of your system. So no, I don't think this is the best way to go to solve these problems. Yeah, it's not a good way to spend time and money, but then the, most people then consider when we port the application of all them. Yeah, porting is kind of a mid-step. Uh, so uh, we have seen some customers trying to trying to solve and modernize the environment by moving platforms. Um, this happens a lot because some of the COBOL systems are running in old machines. Like we have seen some customers running SCO, for example, and they don't they cannot buy new parts for those for those machines anymore. Um, it kind of solves part of the problem. Yes, you have a little bit of a, of a breath time here because you have a, a, a newer machine, but it's not going to solve your data corruption issues because that's actually still there. Um, again, the problem is on the on the file system, on the data that's being managed by COBOL. It has nothing to do with the platform where you're running. Plus, it's too expensive. You're going to have to repurchase and, and buy all the machines again, right? So porting, it's not the way either. It's still a high cost situation. It'd be nice if there's a good balance here with some kind of integration, integrating applications, you know, keep the TCO low and also mitigate your risk. Yeah, and I guess that's the main message of our series of webinars here. You know, uh, like I've been saying, uh, this has nothing to do with the COBOL language. It has all to do with the fact that your data is sitting in a proprietary environment and then it's not being properly managed. Uh, the way that the COBOL runtimes uh, uh, manage this in the, the, the files is not robust enough and has not been designed for the volumes that you have right now, much less for mission critical environments like this. But if you solve that and you find a way to integrate this data to other environments, uh, your life changes completely and we give you uh, a lot of different uh, abilities to, to take advantage of all the investment you have in COBOL. So a lot of those business uh, pressures go away. Yeah, I agree with you. But when you integrate the applications, I think people are really looking for the solution, right? And as you can see here, here's a traditional COBOL architecture with C-Tree RTG. Now we talked about ISAM technology, the history of Faircom, a little bit about COBOL. There's kind of some overlapping things here, Valdo, and kind of talk about that. Yeah, let me explain. Uh, so this slide is here to trying to show to everybody what, what's actually going behind the scenes when you're running a COBOL application. It might be familiar to many of you, you know, those more experienced here in the, how the COBOL environment works. Uh, but you can see, Joe, what, re what really matters here is the fact that you can see the source code. So those, these are the COBOL programs, right? Usually they are pre-compiled into some kind of object file, but then what happens is that your COBOL runtime is in charge of taking those programs and executing them, but it's also the COBOL runtime that does all the I.O. So you can see here the I.O. is done on, on what we call a file system, and I mentioned ISM before. So COBOL is also ISM, Index Sequential Access Method uh, System. Um, there are many different types of file systems out there, like a list on the right here, some of those most popular ones like Vision, for example. This is from AccuCobol. Um, we have CISM. CISM is the common one under Microfocus. There are many others. I mentioned Btrieb here. But the bottom line here is, is, is really important to understand that the COBOL runtime is doing all the access. So what happens is that when you have when you have a few COBOL programs reading a few files here and going to some records, um, that's not a big deal. Uh, it's, it was designed to kind of this workload. I would say something like five to ten concurrent users on top of the same uh, same file in the same record should be fine. Um, but when you start to go into hundreds of users concurrently reading and writing into the same record into the same file. This architecture here cannot handle those workloads, and that's where your data corruption starts to happen. So you can see, Joe, has nothing to do with the language or your programs. It has to do with the way that the solution has been implemented many years ago. So how does RTG fit in this whole thing? Well, because what we do is we replace the file system. So we, we have a full database uh, uh, that manages every all your access to your data. Um, the beauty of our, of our product called C3 RTG is that it has been designed from the beginning as an ISM database. So we are record oriented, we are file oriented, 
Uh, and we developed APIs that allow you to, to plug in the plug C3RTG underneath your COBOL runtime by just replacing the file system. So you see, Joe, we, you don't have to touch anything on the source code. You, know, you don't have to change anything on your logic. We preserve all the logic. So all the IO that COBOL was used to do stays exactly the same with C3RTG. I think that's a lot of people's first reaction when we start talking about this, is no changes to the source code. That's correct, yes. But then because we are a full database, uh, it, it, it's a complete database uh, solution here, um, we bring a lot of additional benefits like you see on the slide here, right? So the very first one is that from now on, um, you have a full client server uh, uh, technology running here and you can interact with our server, with our database server, for, for, uh, for example, to do some hot backup. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to stop your application, you can go straight to the database and, and copy your files. You know, we guarantee the restore. So everything you back up through us, we make sure that if someday you have to go back and restore that data, it is a guaranteed uh, restore. Um, we introduce, we, this is a transactional database and I think that's the secret sauce behind our technology here. We eliminate data corruption because everything is under transaction control. So this is native, you don't have to worry about, you might be asking, well, but my COBOL applications don't control transactions, I don't have a start transaction commit or rollback over there. You don't have to, you can if you want, if you even you can even add this, this kind of capability to your language with us, we support it, but you don't have to. Automatically, we turn on transactions you know, on, on each files on the I.O. You're going to see here in a minute how that works. Uh, and what that means is that if something goes wrong, for example, you run out of power, your machine is down. When we come back, when, you, when C3RTG gets back, it's able to detect uh, what transactions are supposed to be recovered, and we bring the database to an integrity mode again. So we have automatic recovery for you. You don't have to worry about rebuilding files anymore. Okay. I mean, I was sold on those first two, but we also have, you know, security is a huge concern. So we can we secure we can secure your data at rest and the communication. Yes, exactly. Uh, uh, the, the list goes on and on and on, right, Joe? Because it's a complete database like security you mentioned here. So we support communication security like SSL and TLS. The example, the demo you're gonna see here, you're gonna see two machines talking to each other remotely. So it's a network communication going on. You wanna protect the data that's flowing around, don't worry, we do it. You know, We support encryption on the files. Uh, it's a, it's a key-based encryption. So we give you all the control on different levels of encryption you wanna have. We have full user management control. Um, it can be integrated with some single sign-on solutions like LDAP, for example. So it really extends the protection of your data, of your COBOL data which is probably sitting right now on the, on the disk, maybe using some kind of uh, uh, individual encryption system. But in most cases, what we have seen is that the data is actually open over there. Yeah. And it's a multi-threaded solution. Right, that, that'll improve the perform overall performance of this. Exactly, yeah, because what the diagram you saw before on the, on the original file system running under, underneath uh, the COBOL runtime, um, that is a single thread solution. So it scales very badly. With us, um, C3RTG is a full multi-threaded uh, database. What that means is that you can have thousands and thousands of connections simultaneous to, to our database. And we will make sure we will use all parallel systems that are available on the, on the hardware. And if you run out of, of capacity, all you have to do is to upgrade your hardware and buy, buy more CPU or buy more memory. And we're gonna take advantage of that you know you're gonna scale up very well we're designed for for this kind of workload yeah we would consider an engineering database right we want to let you customize it to what you need and how your architecture is set up you know we don't want to force someone into a particular corner as you've mentioned before this is really a full solution even though you're coming up to us for one reason like you need an hrd hadr plan you're looking at you know integrating with jdbc or python or you want to attach your bi tools which, which is why we kind of broke up this webinar series. Today, we're talking more about the, the how to prevent data loss and high availability. Um, but our other webinar series are about modernizing your applications and about integrating with BI tools. So be, be sure to check those out. Yeah, that, I think that's a very important message. The moment you switch your focus from your COBOL environment, from the language and your programs into your data set, uh, there are so many things you can do, and uh, here is, is a short list of the kind of uh, benefits we, we bring to the table with C3RTG. Um, most of them have to do with the fact that we are a full transactional database that will start to manage your, your data set. And by doing that by itself, the, it already improves so much. Uh, like we eliminate data corruption, we, we give you uh, different ways to, to handle the backup, you know, interacting with our database. Uh, you, you can scale as, as large as you want, as large as you need. 
Um, but there are many other benefits, some of the webinars later this week, and we encourage everybody here to watch this uh, tomorrow and Thursday. I think these are nice uh, uh, addresses. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, integration tools as well. Sure. So there, the focus is going to be on, on data loss. Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, no matter which pressures you bring over, what solutions you're looking for or put into your system, it really comes down to TCL, right? The total cost of ownership and how to reduce that, because there's a lot of pressure with that. That's correct. Just by by doing that, by adopting our technology, you reduce so much the total cost of ownership of your platform because you eliminate some process that you don't need anymore. No, you don't have to do like we have one customer. Deal. I mentioned they were doing like backups every 15 minutes. Well, now they're doing backups only once once a day because they they trust their backup. They don't have to do. This is a big economy in terms of resources and and and, and people. Right? Plus, there's some possibilities of revenue increases. You know, as you look at the feature sets that you're allowed to do with the COBOL or even the data mining that you may, may uncover. Correct, yes. Now, although we've been talking a lot, right? I think we need some more COBOL. Yeah, we definitely need more COBOL. <laughs> I'm gonna hand this off to Evaldo right now, and uh, Evaldo's gonna take you through a demonstration on your screen. Yeah, and by the way, let me, we, we, we were discussing a little bit about how we can show uh, data corruption. Um, it's not very easy to simulate a, data, uh, a situation of, of a corrupted data file. I think it's really important to give you the message here that data corruption is solved with our technology because, because of the, all the features we just showed to you here, right? So we protect your data, we shield your data with a transactional, fully transactional database designed for mission critical. Um, we're gonna go through some steps here showing how that works, but the demo is gonna be focused on something a little bit more, uh, more sophisticated, I guess, which is the next, Step. We were talking about building a fillover. So you will see how to take one data file. The demo runs on top of a commercial uh, COBOL application. It's called Passport from one of our partners, uh, Passport Business Solutions. Um, it's a commercial COBOL uh, uh, application that we don't even have the source code. So it's really in interesting to see how we can do this without touching the source code. Uh, on the other hand, it's also a character-oriented application. Um, we think it's nice to show it in a character COBOL. We know many COBOL environments out there are already web-based. That doesn't matter for us because our focus is on the data. But I think like if you show it works with character-oriented, it works with any environment, right? Uh, so before we start, let me sh just show really quick here um, how this works, right? So I'm not going to go, today the focus is not going to be on this on how to set up this environment, but I want to show you here, I mentioned before, this is a commercial COBOL application and it's based on AccuCobol. So like, I'm, like I was showing in the, in the slide, Joe, you can see here uh, running on the, on the, on the AccuCobol environment, just telling it to give us some information about the system. You can see here natively, it comes with the vision file system, um, but we also added Faircom C3RTG as an additional file system over here. So that is the trick. Okay? So we, we have all the tools and the, and the drivers for you to adjust your COBOL environment and add an additional file system. So you don't have to replace your file system. You can keep some files running under vision. As a matter of fact, the demo here will go through one single file conversion to show how that works. Okay? And it's really critical because it helps you to, to decide. You, know, you don't have to do a big bang approach while you convert all your files. Most of our customers end up converting all their files, but the truth is that this is all you have to do. Okay, so just add an additional file system and tell the COBOL runtime that C3RTG is, a, is an extra one. Okay, so typically, like any any kind of uh, COBOL environment, um, this application is not different than others. Uh, it's a structure in terms of folders and and data files. So let me show you here how this looks like. So. You can see here, um, it's an ERP solution. Um, so we have different folders for accounts payable, accounts receivable. So accounts payable 00, zero is for the fake demo company 00. zero. It's the folder for it holds all the accounts payable uh, files. We're gonna be focusing on this particular file, Venfield 00. zero. It's a file that has all the vendors from this fake company, okay? Um, but I'd like to show this here just to show like, uh, maybe try to connect to, the, to your existing environment and see if you feel like this is familiar. It has also index files. Uh, AccuCobo keeps the index files externally in VIX files and it, it really changes depending on the COBOL environment. Some, some environments have everything inside a single file. The most common scenario is having the indexes. None of that really matter for us because we respect all that, okay? So you, you have a vinfuel00.dat file right now, you're gonna still have a vinfuel00.dat file with us, okay? You have your own indexes coming from your COBOL application, we're gonna keep all that and we're gonna preserve all your indexes as well, you know, and give you way more. So I like to show this just to show like how the application is structured. You can see there are multiple different folders here. But let me start the application really quick here and then just take a peek at how it works. As I mentioned before, it's a, it's a character oriented application. So I'm gonna log in into the 00 fake company, the XYZ, right? So just go over here, yes. Let me log in, 
And this is just really to, to give you some sense of, of what the COBOL application is right for. So you can see here typically menu oriented and in this case character oriented, just browsing around the menus. You can see accounts payable right here. That's where we're going. And here's the vendor file. So if I hit enter here, I can just start to browse the file just like a typical COBOL data file. So this is when fuel 0 .that, that we're seeing behind the scenes, okay? So that's like the environment that our, uh, that the audience probably has similarly running in their in their in-house right now, okay? So Joe, let's see how what we do. Let's take this venfuel 0 .that file and convert that into a, C, a, a C3 RTG managed data file, okay? So the way we're gonna do this here is, I'm not, I'm not gonna go through the entire process, I'm gonna more show it to you because I have the demo working in the background and I don't wanna, I don't wanna go through the whole, uh, through the whole process in details. Um, you guys might wanna watch tomorrow and on, on, on the next day, I'm gonna show more like in details how this works. Right now, I'm just gonna explain the steps here, okay? To preserve the, to preserve the demo we have in the background. So the very first step here we wanna do is, we wanna extract the data coming from, from your original data file, right? So we wanna take the venfuel 00.dat and read all the, da all the data that's inside the file, okay? So the way we do this, it changes depending on our COBOL environment. Uh, in this case here, we're gonna use a utility from AcuCobol called VUtil with the dash and load option, okay? Fairly simple, all you have to do is to run the application here. You can see I extracted the data into a dump file, okay? Uh, and, and that's it, right? This is just really to get the data. But to make sure that how our demo works and I don't wanna uh, mess up with my file, let me take the original file, vinfuel 00.dat and move it to a backup file. So there's no more vinfuel 00.dat at this point. And to prove that this is not just slideware, let's just clickbait, huh? It's not just clickbait. <laughs> let's let's prove it here really quick. Let's go back to the application and show it here. Right. Uh, let me type the right password. There you go. It's a secret password. Can I tell anyone? So come back here in vendors, and you can see that now there's an error in the application, right? So this error here is very probably sadly familiar to some some people because that's what happens when there's a corrupted file going on so in this case it's happening because the file is not there anymore we just move the file right um, we're just in the process of creating a new file so the way to create a new file from this point on is uh just an extra few steps and what we want to do here is to make this venfuel 00.dat file become a c3 rtg file okay so here's where i'm just going to show you how to do it i'm not going to do it but the very first step would be to create an empty file on, on C3 RTG. So you can see I use now one of our utilities called CTUtil with the dash make option, okay? And I have many ways, many different ways to create a file. I'm gonna use in this case, the external file descriptor, XFD file, just because we have them. You don't have to, but the XFD for those that are not familiar has a description of the data schema for the file, okay? If you don't have the XFD, we have other ways to create this here, but I would do this. I would I would run this command, ctu2-make venfuel 0, 0 and create an empty file, okay? The next step would be after I create an empty file, I would import the data from the original file set. So still using the same utility, ctu2 that we have, uh, but now with a dash load option, you would run from the dump file, you would run a load into your venfuel 00, now a C3 RTG file, okay? So this is essentially extracting the data from your original file and importing the data into C3, okay? With the, with the add option here, so just adding additional records, okay? And the last step here would be, at this point here, I would have a full C3 RTG file, uh, converted from your original data file, but the application is still not working because the file is, is under C3RTG, but we have one last step, which is telling the COBOL runtime that for this file, I don't want to use Vision, I want to use C3RTG as the file system. Uh, so one of the things we talked about is like, they can take a facial approach to this. Some customers move everything over, some can do it in certain phases. Correct, yes. Uh -huh. And for like the purposes of this, we're moving one file, but we can move the whole systems over. And this is also something our engineers can work with you guys on if you give us a call. Yeah, that's very important because if you remember, Joe, you saw like we added a file system, right? So we're not forcing anything to change here. At this point, I'm gonna tell the Kobo runtime that, hey, for Ventfuel 00, I want you to use C3 instead of Vision, right? Vision's still there, but for this file, I want you to use C3. Uh, this particular step changes depending on the Kobo um, uh, runtime you have and the Kobo compiler you're using. For Vision, the way to do this is by setting up an environment variable with the underlying host name on the on the name of the file. So it's fairly simple. All I have to do is this, okay? And now if I go back to my application, uh, let me run the application again. Um, you're gonna see that at this point here, log, logging in again on 00 company, okay? 
you're going to see that now, if I go back to vendors, you can see that it's working again and I'm browsing the data file. But now this is a C3 RTG file. Okay. So now we can take advantage of all the things that C3 has to offer. That's correct. This file, VentFuel00, at this point, is completely protected. You're not going to have data corruption going on in this file anymore. No, it's protected under our transactional system, so it is already with transaction on. So what that means is that we can recover automatically into the file if, if there is any problem or something. So you, just by doing this simple step, you could back up this file if you want. You know, so We protect everything here on VentFuel00. Yeah, I think that's a critical point there, the fact that we can guarantee that file now, the auto-recovery of that file. Yeah, exactly. You know, And then... You mentioned some of the additional benefits. Uh, it's not the focus for today, but let me show this anyways um, to make it easier for us to run it on the demos. I'm gonna make this file available on our SQL interface as well, okay? So to do that, there's one final step. You don't have to take all your COBOL files and make them available on SQL. Um, you can do it one by one, but we, we didn't mention here, it was kind of briefly mentioned, but the moment C3 RTG is installed, you not only protect all your data, you get a full SQL server on top of your COBOL data. So we do it. It's our SQL server. It's our relational database. It's also transaction controlled. So what that means is that you can, you can run transactions on the SQL side and also on the COBOL side. The way to do this, still using CTOTO and now ex extensively using the external effort, uh, file descriptor because this is where we get the data type mapping from COBOL to SQL, but with an option called SQLize. SQLize is kind of a verb. Is that a Faircom term? It is a Faircom term, <laughs> yes. We invented the let's SQLize COBOL data. What it means is give access to, to SQL through through our SQL server to COBOL data files, okay? Um, fairly simple process to do, to be done here. And once I run this command here, I can switch over. Let me switch over to our some of our set of tools. We have several of them. I'm going to show some of them here today. Let me switch over to what we call the SQL Explorer tool, okay? So you can see SQL Explorer in this case. SQL Explorer is connected to our to the same machine to the to the machine we're running the demo over there, where C3 SQL is running as uh, as well. And like I mentioned before, we have a full SQL server, right? So it supports stored procedures. We have triggers. You know, we can you can do uh, views, for example, building across views. And that particular file, VinFuel00, is right here. Okay, so this is now a COBOL data file, but it's being seen and managed as a SQL table from, from our SQL server side. So we're not duplicating any data here, Joe. This is exactly the same file, okay? And if I come over here and, and click on table records, you're gonna see like it's gonna load, here we go, that's that's the that's the same file we're seeing there. Uh, and it's quite interesting. We can show you like some, some example, I'm gonna show you in a minute here how this, this goes. What happened here behind the scenes was essentially a SQL query that you can now just run SQL. This is a topic for our, for our webinars tomorrow and, and, and the next day, right? We wanna, we, we're gonna show in more details how to take advantage of our SQL interfaces. For us, here's just an easier way for me to show you what's going on when you build a failover, how you can use this technology to build a failover server and protect 100% of your data. Okay? Yeah, I think if they find this interesting, the fact that you have real-time access to that COBOL data, once you give C3, let C3 manage it, it's pretty interesting. So check out the other webinars, definitely. We'll dig a little more into it. Yeah, and now let's switch over to show you how we can protect this data with a separate machine that is a real-time replica of your main data. So because we are a database uh, managing all your data files from this point on, in this case, just been field zero, zero, but in more typical scenarios, everything, um, you can tell our database to create replicas in real-time of this main, of this main main database. Uh, and to do that, let me switch over to another tool we have here called Ops Manager. Okay? So Ops Manager is for Operations Manager. Uh, and what it does, it's, it's our graphical user interface, allows you to manage a farm of C3 RTG uh, servers. You can see here we have the main C3 RTG server running here. This is the one we're, we're running right now. But our, our, I also have here set up a second one called uh, Faircom S CentOS, right? So this is my replica, okay? This is where I have a failover. It's a completely different machine. Let me show you here. Let me bring it up here so you can see. It's running a completely different environment. I have C3 running here in the background as well. Let me bring it up here to show you. Like, here's C3 server running in the background over here, okay? So a completely different machine um, with, uh, with a replica. It's designed to be a replica of the main server here. Okay. Well, this is a great user interface because it doesn't matter the topology of your architecture and your network. You can set a hub and spoke. You can set all different scenarios up. Again, we allow you to customize this. That's correct. All you have to do is to drag and drop information from here and there, you see, and that's how you build replications, right? So in this case, I already have what we call a replication plan design here. Let me double click and show you what it looks like. So what is a replication plan? 
Um, this is all based on our transactional engine and our real-time replication capabilities, right? So what we do is we we design a solution that's based on publisher and subscriber concepts. So very the, similar targeting source. Yes, exactly. The source server, the source server is the publisher. So any C3RTG server here can be a publisher, can publish information, okay? Uh, and then what it does is it decides which files it wants to make available for other servers to subscribe to. So in this case, I already have a subscription running here, but let's take a look at this. Like for example, I can, I, I'm gonna look into the publisher side. So what, what happens here with the publisher side, you can see Joe down here, I have venfuel 00dat already published as one of the files I wanna I wanna be able to to share. Okay, so the way this works is I come over here and root. Uh, no, we don't want to switch anything here. Let's just leave it alone here. I don't want, I don't want to mess up with the plan here. <laughs> yeah, essentially we show we show you all the list of files that you have over here. You we can scan it remotely. You can see there are some options here like local directory or remote directory, and you pick whatever file you want. I want this file here, venfuel 00dat which is the one we just converted. Okay. And you can publish different plans too. So if you have different servers that want to subscribe to different different parts of your plan, then you can set up multi plan, ten plans. That's plan. correct. Yep. Yes. In this case here, we want to make sure that this server is publishing venfuel 00 that for whoever wants to have access to that data. In this case, who wants to have access to that is just a second machine, right? We want the CentOS machine to see the data. So I can just hit preview here. You're gonna see this is telling me where the the target server is gonna store venfuel 00 that. Okay. So it's just a folder and you can decide it and you really, you can put it in different places, you know, you can have uh, different controls. We do support bi-directional uh, replication, bi-directional replication always, we always strongly recommend to be careful because of data conflicts. Sure. We have some tools to manage data conflict, but in this case here is just a simple replication one-to-one -one because all I want is to build a failover machine for the main one, right? So, so that's the concept of the replication. Um, this replication plan, in this case, it's already published and it's already up and running. So everything that's happening on the main server over here is actually already being pushed on the second server over there. Before switching over to show how this works, let me show you some other options here. Uh, this is a full uh, system that allows you to control and monitor what's going on with replication. So you can see there are many different options here. Like for example, I want you to remember the last, last position you were on the transaction side to make sure that you recover in some, in some cases where you don't want to deprecate old, old transaction, for example. We have options where you can, you can pull or you can push the data, you know, that changes a little bit in terms of performance and what you want to do. Uh, so we give you all these controls here and we go all the way to tell you like, I want to turn on some some warning alerts for depending on the latency on the network. Right? Network is always something that's a little bit out of control. So if you have a replication set up, you can tell our server, hey, if the second server is more than 30 seconds late in terms of the transaction where it's supposed to be, uh, raise a latency of warning, for example. Or even turn something like if it's more than 300 seconds delayed, maybe network is down, you know, and actually the server is already wrong. It's too too far back. So don't use it as a fillover, for example. We have all these alarms ready for you, okay? Yeah. So it's fairly simple to use it, okay? The only way to go here, you can see there are some indications like graphical indications. This is green because it's actually running. Um, and I can come over here and see what's going on with this uh, replication plan. Like you can see here, all the statistics of uh, transactions that happen, you know, and everything that's going on. We show you the latency. Um, let's see this actually live and running, how this works, right? Let's come over here. So let me switch over here. So I mentioned this is the table sitting on the on the main server we just we just converted, right? So what happens if I come over here in one record like this, for example, and I don't know, change something here, like for example, change the name of one vendor, uh, just hit enter here. So I just updated uh, one of the vendors here, change his name for Mortify to Mortifying, okay? Just to show how this is actually real, real stuff, right? Let me go back. Let me get the application running here, start pbs.sh. So this is all going on on the main server, right? So this is like, typical how it would be if you had your own application running over there. If I go back to the application, you can see if I come back to vendors here, uh, you're gonna see that it changed already to Wordify, right? So this is the same data set, right? So but that's, have, that's great, the real-time access to that data without any source code changes. Correct, yeah. So in this case, what happens is that behind the scenes here, I run a SQL query, an update SQL query, and updated the data just because I was using our SQL Explorer interface. But you don't have to, whatever changes in COBOL will change here as well and so on. But the beauty of this is that now, because we have replication running here, 
I'm pretty sure that the change I just did here is already replicated over here. So let's take a look at that and let's switch to the second server, okay? So here's the second server. Uh, I already have it open here just for the sake of simplicity and time for the demo, but I can come over here to Venfield 00. You can see it's the same file over here that we replicated. Uh, if I go to table records here, you're gonna see in a minute, here's, here are the data and you can see word defying here as the second, uh, as the data that uh, that was changed and replicated over there, right? So this can go on and on. Like for example, let me let me get, let me do something here. Like, can just to show the whole thing all together. If I come over here and move it back to Wordify, for example, let's say someone changed something here. Now I move back to Wordify over here. You know. Uh, now, you're, now you're just having fun with this. I do have fun with this. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I can. I can come over back. Let's look into the activity. You're gonna see those transactions are right here. So they just happen, right? So it shows the latency. They were immediate transactions, so they didn't take any time um, because it's just everything running in the same network here. So it's really nice. You can see a lot of extra information coming in here from the from the uh, servers. You can see those that didn't work. If anyone didn't work, we have the exceptions and so on. But then let me go back here to the SQL Explorer. And let me just hit refresh on this guy here and load this table again. And you're going to see that it changed back again to Wordify here. See, Wordify again over here. So replication is live here and running and making sure all the data is across, uh, across going across each one of the servers. So at this point, Joe, this Faircom S CentOS server right here is a fillover for the main server over here with all your data sets on COBOL available in real time and you can do whatever you want with this data. Yeah, so you probably do whatever you want with that data. That you know, there's lots of good opportunities here. You know, one person may come to us and be like, well, we want to use it as the failover scenario, or we may want to use this as a reporting server to query against it and hook our BI tools to it so it doesn't impact the production environment. Exactly, yeah. So now let's simulate a crash, right? Let's let's get into the funny zone here. So let me take out here and let's assume that you had a problem with your main application and something happened and it's not working anymore. So the crash here, I'm gonna simulate the crash just by running, I'm just gonna stop our server, C3 server in this case. It's just a simple way, right? I don't wanna pull the plug here. It's gonna to take too long to bring everything back. But let's assume I stop my server here, C3 server right now and just, so if I stop C3 server, if you remember, C3 server was in charge of Venfuel 00, right? So Venfuel 00 should not be working anymore and it will simulate a situation where the application is down, okay? So I shouldn't have access to it. Yeah, exactly. So if I go back to the application, we have to wait a, little, a few seconds here just to make sure that the server is shut down. If I wait, if, if I go back to the application at this point here, uh, the application and try to read Venfuel 00, you're gonna see the application has an error and it's not gonna work. Let me see if this server is down already. Uh, sometimes it takes a few seconds because we have uh, lots of connection going on here in the behind the scenes. Yeah, the server is done already, right? So I can switch over here and you can see Ops Manager shows that to you. It's grayed out. This means the server is not up and running. Replication now is in red, shows to you that it's, the replication is not working right now. You don't have to worry about any of this. We recover automatically everything for you. you know, so when it comes back, we, we just catch up again. You know, everything will be will be in good shape again. We make sure everything is fine. So now you can use that as your production data and now while you work on the original production server, right? Exactly. So now Faircom S and OS is still running. So all I have to do is to switch over to switch my application, my COBOL application over here. Before we do that, let's see if the application is actually down, right? So let's make sure the application is not, um, let's go back to the application and try to read that file again. And you're going to see that, I can type really quick here. So don't, you can see there's an error with Venfuel 00. So the application is down. That's the panic everybody was, you were talking about in the beginning, right? <laughs> the system down, panic, yeah, panic. Exactly. You don't have to panic anymore. No panic anymore because now what we have, we have a second server real time available there that you all you have to do is to switch your COBOL application over there. For us, that's fairly simple. All you have to do is to tell the COBOL runtime, hey, don't connect to the server, connect to the remote one. So again, for vision, just set up an environment variable. There are different ways to do this. But at this point here, I already, if I, let me show you here, uh, let me get, let me show you this configuration file. This is one of our internal configuration files. So if I take a look at this here, um, I can copy it right, right, conf, here you go. You can see this configuration file is pointed to the Faircom CentOS server. Okay, so I'm telling it, hey, connect to a different machine uh, for a fillover. But once you do this, if I go back to the application here and run the application again, at this point, application will show you, uh, will connect to the second remote server over here. We'll go back to vendors, hit F1, and you can see it's up and running again, and it's back. And to show you that this is not just slider again, let me go back here to, let's go back here to SQL Explorer and show that this is the CentOS machine. So what happens if I come over here and change this guy to uh, Wordif? 
Spotify and whatever, right? So let's put something weird here, okay? So like this, okay? New startup of a vendor here came up, Word Defiance. Let me go back to the Kobo application and, and let me go up here to the vendors. Let's scan this file again. And you can see it changed to Word Defiance, right? So this is, this is how fast you are able to have a failover machine uh, just by adopting C3 RTG and putting your your files to be managed under us you know i think great i think the great thing is a lot of people can identify with this because it exists out there but a lot of people don't know that it exists for your cobalt data yeah and just like letting c tree manage that opens up the doors to it absolutely yeah so remember everything we did here just to recap joe is that we took one file and we put it under c3 rtg management and that means we are on transaction control c3 rtg has a full set of tools so i'm going to show some of them like for example we have something called c3 ace monitor that cho shows you all the logs you know everything that's going on behind the scenes i have to reconnect the part of the server here i don't want to go into that but like we have other tools like for example we have we have gauges okay where are my gauges here let me see if we can show them really uh, they are hidden here somewhere here are the gauges right so we have additional tools that allow you to to connect and keep monitoring your file your database so these are all uh these are all benefits that c3rtg immediately brings to the table but then beyond that we allow you to create replicas and you saw only one replica but the most common scenario with our customers joe is that they end up building multiple replicas they have a hub spoke architecture or a chain architecture where some of the data goes for SQL, some of the data goes for fillover. And they're running DR, different data centers. I mean, it gets pretty complex with some of these, some can, of the, these can. customers. And very sophisticated, but you see now at least you can do the planning, right? You well, can build a fillover. It, it's good, it's good about it, right? It can be as sophisticated as you want it to be. Yes, exactly, yeah. So that's the demo, Joe. Let me switch over to, back to the slide sets here. Uh, well, thanks, Valdo. I think uh, we definitely got some more COBOL there. Yep. And as you guys, as you can see on your screen there, this is, we talked about the replication for COBOL. This is kind of an overview of it. Yeah, the replication is the key point here, uh, because again, because it's transactional, so you see it on the slide here, you can see the log file. This is transaction log files that we keep. Uh, because it's a transactional database, uh, what we do is we allow on top of the transactional log, everything that's committed can be replicated somewhere. So you can think about this as a way to transport data and get it anywhere you want. Uh, we give you some callbacks capability. So while you're doing the replication, you can transform this data. So we have customers using that to mask personal information, for example, take the data from the production environment, replicate it to developers, but mask personal information. There are many, many different ways. I think the possibilities are really huge here. I mean, this is we have an evolutionary system here and allowing your COBOL to be a part of that solution. I emphasize, emphasize solution because I think we've reiterated the fact that everybody comes to us for different reasons. Yeah. And, uh, and a lot of these companies chose us for a high performance and reliability. That's correct, yeah. So I think the, the critical summary here is really that this is a full database managing your file system, quite different from what you have today. Right now, most of the problems you have today with your COBOL system are, are uh, rely on the fact that the file system is not very robust and it has not been designed for the volumes and the mission criticality that you have today. So once you adopt C3RTG, you get a transactional database taking care of all your uh, of your COBOL I.O., okay? We introduce transaction automatically. You have automatic recovery. You don't have to worry about situations like the crash or something. We bring it back. You have hot backup with guaranteed restore and full security. Right? And no need to change the source code. I hate, I, I keep on saying that. Very but important. But that's, that's great for people to understand. As, and when you guys reach out to us and work with us or engineers, we work with you one-on-one. -on -one. You'll see that. And I think they got a taste of that through your demonstration that's there. really critical joe because you saw in the demo we didn't show a single line of cobol code you don't have to we don't have to touch the cobol uh, cobol co cobol codes to bring this kind of benefit so it's my situation unique or whatever have you seen it yeah well what's our saying around here not in the mainframe we support it that's exactly right uh, <laughs> i mean, we have lots of different partners out there like i said we've been around for 40 years and we keep on evolving this product year over year over year so we've got We've got old versions, new versions. So don't be embarrassed if you're sitting there like, uh, my version's way too old, or you haven't seen this, or you haven't been a part of that. We have great partners out there as well. Yeah, yeah, I guess you can see a list along. The list is really long, you know, this is just a partial list. We support way more than that. Uh, uh, the very first one is Variant. Variant is a very good partner from us from the beginning. They have a very cool COBOL solution called IS COBOL that takes your COBOL application, converts it to Java, you know, and lets you run anywhere you want. Well, C3RTG is the OEM file system natively coming with IS COBOL. Uh, if you haven't heard about them, I encourage you to check them out. It's really nice. But we support Akikobo, which is what the, what you just saw in the demo here. All kinds of different versions, you know, even older ones. Microfocus, we go back all the way to version 3.0. 
This is from the 80s. Uh, Microfocus is a partner as well. So we go all the way up to the latest and greatest to Visual Cobol, but even RM Cobol, you know, and all kinds of different platforms. Exactly. And when we talk about lowering, keeping the, the TCO low, you know, lowering that, lowering the cost of this, of this process, um, you know, your vendor maybe wanted to get you new runtime licenses and well, you, you know, you just have to move the data over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to move to Red Hat or something like that. Yeah. And I guess the message here is really don't be shy. Okay. Don't think your environment is too old or, oh, I don't think they support those platforms. Don't worry about that. Okay. We're very used to see all kinds of different old operating systems. We have customers running SEO. We have customers running NCR Unix. We can help everybody. And if you have some kind of different COBOL that you're not used to, let's say less common one that's not in the list here, talk to us. Okay. We're always open to see how we can help you. Well, as you can see here, here's like just a summary of the, all the features and advantages of the complete solution C-Tree RTG has to offer. Yeah, it's a good summary. Um, again, connecting back to the list of customers we mentioned in the beginning, um, this technology has been designed for mission critical high volumes uh, environment. Um, if your COBOL system is hitting this, this threshold right now or has hit this threshold a few years ago, you're probably suffering this problem and it has nothing to do with the COBOL language because it's old, blah, blah, blah. We don't think about that, you know. We love COBOL. We need more COBOL, right, Joe? I think we always need more COBOL. Yeah, we are here to help you protect your, your investment in your COBOL system. And the, the list of benefits that we can help you if you switch the focus to the data is immense. Yeah, I mean... You know, we really appreciate, you know, you guys coming out today for one reason. We've got two more days of webinars. This is just day one of all them. We're just getting started here. Yep. I think we've talked a lot. Avaldo showed you a great demonstration or at least a, a, a teaser into what we can do. Now it's time for the free stuff, right? At the end of this webinar, so don't just log off. When we close out the webinar, you'll get a short survey. Just let us know how we did, what you would like to see on future webinars, and everyone who submits the completed survey gets this cool free RTG Dino shirt. Yeah, you with, this, the axe? with the super, yeah, that's the axe. You see, Jeff asked me in the beginning. So that's where you see we we think Kobo is a beast, powerful beast. Will we we are here to help you to make it achieve new heights. You know, we let's tame the beast together. Exactly. Here's just a brief view of uh, all of our webinars. You know, tomorrow we'll be here at the same time. Um, talking about real-time analytics, and then Thursday we'll be talking about how to modernize your COBOL applications by developing new models, PHP, Python, and Java. It's a little bit of everything. It's a good, it's a, just a complete package, really, for the Faircom family. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll be here tomorrow again, hopefully with cameras. Well, we really appreciate it. As you can see on your screen there, go to faircom.com slash RTG and download a free evaluation copy. Once you do that, Save some time and effort. We, like I said, we've seen it all. Contact us. Give us a call on the 800 number there, 1 800 234 8180. Or you see Evaldo and my email up there. Just reach out to us. We'll work with engineers. We'll get you one on one. We'll kind of work through the demonstration like we did. And also, for a limited time right now, $5,000 proof of concept. Yeah, that's critical, Joe, because we, we like proof of concepts. We know that everything you saw here probably looks a little bit familiar, but the truth is that it, it's really much different for you to make a decision if you see it working with your own environment. So we are here to help you. If you want to see how C3RTG would work with your application, talk to us. Like Joe said, for a limited time here, we're giving you a $5,000 value proof of concept help to just get your application up and running and give you a taste of what C3RTG can do for your COBOL system. I mean, it's all about time and money, right? So we offer our time for free and expedite their time to process this. I mean, it seems like a win-win. Yep. Evaldo, you did a great job today. Thank I'm, you. I'm Joe. This is Evaldo. It's been a lot of fun today, day one of three. Right now, I'm going to kick it back to your MC and host, Jeff. All right. Hey, Joe and Evaldo, thank you guys so much. I appreciate that. Uh, that was some awesome information. Uh, before we get going, though, into the wrap-up, I want to uh, – I've been asked to – for you guys to elaborate on a couple of questions that actually came in that would be a benefit to our audience. Uh, the first one's kind of geared towards Avaldo and is dealing with the gentleman who uh, basically has an international company. He has a base in the U.S. and he's got some uh, places in South America and also in Australia and also in Europe. Mm -hmm. What's the reality of him being able to have this replication, you know, cross-continent or is it more recommended to keep it in-house or what? what's your thoughts on that, Avaldo? 
Well, it's a very good question. And uh, we did not mention that while talking about our references, but Faircom is a global company. So we have customers all around the globe and we support many of those customers in seven by 24 uh, support options. So we have the ability to get across across the globe support if you need, um, because of course we understand how mission critical environments are, right? Uh, but to your question, I guess, uh, about using replication and international uh, in an across globe system, Probably to build a fillover, I would recommend you to keep in the same data center if you're going to use replication for that. Um, for the fillover purposes, that the main purpose, it, it's going to work across different states or across different cities, for example, or even across countries. The challenge is going to be network latency. So if you feel like if you, if you have control of that and even in desperate situations, it should not be a problem if you're okay with the latency. And so we give you all the alerts to control of that. I think. Probably I would recommend to have a fillover server in the same data center using real-time replication, and then maybe a second server somewhere else for a disaster recovery. Um, we're probably talking about city to city, not country to country, just because of the distance and the latency here. It's gonna work because it's all TCP IP based, um, but you might start to see some big latency coming in because of the network. Awesome, Jeff? Waldo. Thank you so much for that. No, I appreciate that. Uh, Joe, we have one more for you. And actually, you know, I'm kind of biased because I think I already know the answer. But uh, the answer, or the question deals with what's the actual cost of C-Tree RTG? And my answer is it's priceless because, you know, it, you don't have to touch your code. There's a lot of other things. You're saving manpower. You're, I mean, it expedites a whole lot of things. So I'd consider it priceless, but I'm also a little biased because I'm a Faircom employee. So what are your thoughts? <laughs> That's a great point, Jeff. Unfortunately, most people don't want to hear priceless. Um, you know, it, it really is a key factor that we want to be a valued partner with our customers and we more take more of a personalized approach. So give us a call, reach out to us. We kind of work with you and customize our, our pricing model with your particular environment and your particular needs. It's not a one price fits all. So we really capture the moment, capture your particular needs and can work with you on a price. Remember, RTG is a full solution. Awesome. I uh, appreciate that. Thank you so much, Joe. All right. Wow. Thanks, guys. I think that does it for us today. I want to thank everybody for joining us. We hope that you learned something useful. Valuable links and contact information are listed on the slide within the presentation window for your convenience. If you're ready to learn more, consider joining us for additional webinars. Tomorrow, we talk about COBOL application modernization, and the next day, we'll focus on real-time analytics over your COBOL data. At the completion of the series, you will find all of these webinars, including today's, available to watch on demand at the link provided in the chat area. Also, please feel free to reach out directly to Evaldo and Joe if you have any direct questions. Their emails are right there in that uh, presentation window for you. Go ahead and jot those down if you need them. But thanks again. We hope to see you next time. Si oh, wait, hang on. Before we sign off, don't forget to fill out that survey in order to receive your proud Dino Cobalt shirt. When I close out the webinar, a pop-up window will show up, and when it does, please click the close button to immediately receive the survey. All right, guys, that's it. Signing off. Evaldo, Joe, and Jeff, thank you. See you Thanks, guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.